Hello again everybody and welcome back. Um, I'm the UP Gamer and we're going to be showing you another deck that I'm going to be running today. The deck that I'm running is, I named it Undergrowth for one simple reason. It's all based off the Undergrowth mechanic that can play in all the cards that are in this deck. Um, looking at the deck list here, we have Stitcher Supplier and what that's going to do, as soon as you play it, it's going to dump three cards into your graveyard and then when it dies, it dumps three more cards into your graveyard, which is perfect for this deck. Most of the cards in this deck are all going to run off the undergrowth mechanic, which means when they get played, they're going to do something uh, to do with how many creatures are found in your graveyard. That's what undergrowth is. I have Necrotic Wound, which is going to take care of creatures. Um, it'll give them negative X, negative X depending on how many creatures you have in your graveyard, which can be very powerful. Um, Crawl Harpooner here. Um, this one, when you play it, it gets a plus X plus zero uh, for the number of creatures that you have in your graveyard and then it can fight a creature with flying which is great. Mausoleum Secrets you can search your card for a converted uh, mana cost less than or equal, equal to the number of creatures in your graveyard and then put that hand into your library which is any card in our deck depending on the time when you play it. We have Moonmark Painter and when that, that land and or when that creature enters the battlefield it's going to give a creature plus X plus O, according to the number of creatures in our graveyard again. Um, and that creature gets Menace, so it works great. If they have one creature left on the board, you play this. Say you have six creatures in your graveyard, it gives one of your creatures plus six plus zero. But the creature can't be blocked by a single one because it now has Menace, so it slams through. This is a great card, Golgari Raiders, <coughs> because it has haste. It enters the battlefield... It starts as a 0-0, zero, zero, but it's going to get a plus 1, plus 1 counter for each creature in your graveyard. And then it has haste, so it's excellent. Uh, you slam this down turn 4, you got 5, 6 creatures in your graveyard. You now have a 5-5 five, five. with haste, it slams home. Uh, this one, the Rhizome Lurcher. Again, when it enters the battlefield, it gets plus 1, plus 1 counter for each creature in your graveyard. This one is a plus 2, plus, or it's a 2-2, two, two, and then it gets that many counters. Uh, Dark Bargain. This is just another way to throw creatures into our graveyard or cards into our graveyard. Um, you look at the top three cards of your graveyard, you pick two, they go into your hand, and then one of them goes into the graveyard, and then this card deals two damage to you. We have Liliana, Untouched by Death here, because she's throwing all kinds of stuff into the graveyard. If one of the cards happens to be a zombie, you're going to gain two life, and your opponent is going to lose two life, which is great. The second ability, the minus two, we don't use a ton. I mean, it could be useful, but with our deck, it doesn't do a whole lot. Ritual of Soot, that's just take out a bunch of weenies or red creatures or white creatures if they have them all lined up. Uh, Bone Dragon, I have that in there um, just because it's a, it's a flyer for one, which helps this deck. Um, it gives us a little bit of evasion, plus it, it, this, this card doesn't ever really die. Um, we're throwing so much into the graveyard. If it's one of them, you can just pull it out of the graveyard by paying five. You just exile seven cards out of your graveyard, and then you can play this. Crawl Foragers. This will give you life gain, depending on how many creatures you have in your graveyard. This one, you can pull creatures back out of your graveyard if you need to. We don't do it very often, but it's nice to have the opportunity if we, if we can't find a Ritual of Soot or something else to take out a bunch of the other opponent's creatures. This is the card, um... That's very important to this deck. This is our win condition. And what this is going to do is every time it hits the board, it's going to deal one damage for each creature in our graveyard. This deck is mostly almost all creatures, so we usually have a lot. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. Um, and when you can just slam this down for 7, and it does 12 damage to somebody, that's an easy win condition. Um, the Molder Hulk's a real easy spell. Um, this one is going to cast, uh, uh, normally it costs 9, but it costs 1 less for each creature in our graveyard. And then when it enters, you also get to add a land from your, your graveyard onto the battlefield, which is nice. And this is just a 6-6. Six, six. That's what you see for lands there. I will put up a deck list down below. Also, if you're enjoying what you're seeing, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to gather some, uh, some subscribers and add to our community here. So if you could do that, I would appreciate it. And we'll go play a couple games with this. It's kind of a fun deck. It's different. People don't see it a whole lot. So <coughs> a 
kind of a different uh, aspect of play. And with this deck currently, my record is, it's not all wins, of course. Um, five wins, four losses, so I'm sitting at 44.44% after nine games. So we'll play some more and see how, see how we do. All right, so this, not a great starting hand. We'd rather have one more land at least, but we're going to play it. Stitcher Supplier is a huge card for us. We like to get that on the board right away. That way... It's throwing cards into our graveyard. That's how we win with this deck. And what are we going to play against? I'm going to pay for this right away. I'm going to pay the two life because I want to get Stitcher Supplier out. That's how important that is to us. And you'll see it just throws three cards right into our graveyard. None of them. Oh, we do have one. And you can see on all our creatures with Undergrowth, it shows one, 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 one. That's how many creatures are in our graveyard. It looks like we're playing. Is it? And we're just going to play that. He very well could counter. It doesn't really matter to us if he counters. I mean, it, it, it'll matter eventually, but right now, it's just get more creatures in our graveyard. Excuse me. Yep, uh, I know it's later than usual for me to be posting a video, but I was uh, playing Dungeons & Dragons with my with my brothers tonight, so that's what I was up to. I don't assume he's probably going to block this. He may. But I would be surprised. No block. It's fine for us. If we had one more creature in our graveyard... I would just cast this uh, Necrotic Wound, and that gives a uh, negative one, negative one for your, each creature in your graveyard. I only have one right now, so it can't kill the uh, Electromancer, but if I had one more, it would. <coughs> I'm assuming this is some kind of Drake's deck. He's got Field of Rune, and he's duplicating. That is, it could be important, it might be inconsequential, we'll see. It depends on how fast we can get through our deck. There we go, more creatures in our graveyard. So now, he killed one of ours, now I have two in our graveyard, so say goodbye to one of his Electromancers. More land, that is just fine. It can enter tapped. It's not that big a deal. I'm going to attack. Kill it. Then I'll put more more creatures in her graveyard. <laughs> That's kind of the... It's like, you don't really care when you attack. It's like, oh, you're going to kill it? Then it goes in the graveyard, where it's going to give me the bonus when I play more. Depending on what you have. So I can play that. I can Ritual of Soot and take care of his Electromancer. I can play the Golgari. The issue is, is I don't have enough stuff in my graveyard. I can't kill the Drake. Ritual of Soot deals. It kills everything with three or less uh, converted mana cost. So it will kill the Electromancer, but not the Drake. The Drake is going to be our issue here. And I would much rather have Golgari Raiders when they're rushing him with haste to have a lot more... Uh, bang for the buck than just 2-2. Two, two. This one will have 4-4, four, four, so I think that's what we're going to play. We're going to play this Rhizome Lurcher. And then we're going to attack with the Stitcher's... Stitcher Supplier again. There you go. She's going to she's gonna die. So she's going in. That'll give us three more. Plus she's going to dump three more cards in there. None of which are creatures. So we have three now. So we'll see what happens. But it's just, it's an interesting deck to play. What's he going to do? Risk factor. Yeah, I'm... I'll just take the damage. If 
we get one more land, there we go. We'll just play the Bone Dragon. That's at least, we'll slow down their drakes. And then we'll just attack with the, with the Lurcher. And it's, I mean, he could have killed it. It's fine for us if he kills him. Again, if we get a few more creatures into our graveyard, when we play him, right now when we play him, it's taking three life. So if he gets up to six, we do a couple more damage. <laughs> I don't know what he did, but it didn't, it did not work. It must be because he tried to come. Well, we have three. We have five here. I'm just looking to see how I can get this to kill. Well, we're going to do this. We're going to send this Rhizome Lurcher in. We're going to save the Bone Dragon in case we have to block. We're hoping he blocks this. If he blocks it, then we have four. Then I can kill the other Drake with Necrotic Wound. He did not. Which is actually pretty ballsy. Yeah, I need something to be putting creatures in the graveyard right now. So we're just going to end our turn and see what, see what he does. He's obviously got something up his sleeve. <coughs> More drakes. Is he going to attack? So what we're going to do... We're going to block one, and then we're going to kill the other. We want him dead. So when this dies, it'll make it four creatures in our graveyard. Then I can cast Necrotic Wound to kill the other one. So he doesn't die, which is a bummer. So he had an answer. He can do six. Now, since it's not in the graveyard, I can't use this. Now we're probably in trouble. I'm not sure what this will do. Well, even if I play the Bone Dragon, it ain't going to really matter. So this is a loss. I'm just I want to see if this will take out the tokens. It will not. Well, it's good to know. Well, good game. Well, there's that. I clicked the wrong button there. Update, we're now four and six. That puts us at well exactly forty percent. But we'll play another. See how it goes. That's what I mean with this deck. You can certainly win with it. but And we were close, but we did not pull it off. So we'll just play another one. No biggie. As long as you're having fun, what's the what's the difference? I'm, you can see I'm still hovering on gold rank 4 still. Oh yeah, and just so you know, you can see my, na uh, my gamer name changed. I'm now UP Gamer, which is what I should have been all along. So, not a great starting deck. We don't have anything that can really uh, pump cards into our graveyard except for her. But she's at four. We only got two mana. I'm going to keep it. Hope for the best. There's another land for us. That's nice. And looks like we are playing Demir. So I'm pretty sure she's gone anyway.
Throw a creature in there. That does not count as a creature. Well, I'm going to play one of these just so I can get him on the board right away. If in case we need defense or something. Which is possible. Or just start chipping away. Well, or there you go. Now we have one in the one in the graveyard. I have nothing to play, so I'll play our tap land. Next turn I'll play our woodland cemetery. That'll give us four, and then we'll start getting actual creatures on the board. Or getting actual creatures countered and in the graveyard, which is the same thing to us. Yeah, it's an interesting deck. It's it's kind of it's fun to play. Well, there we go. There's another one in the graveyard for us. And there's our our win condition. We're a long way off from that, obviously. And next turn we're going to have to discard something, which is just another creature in the graveyard. So now they're at three. That, that lovely, lovely giant. Mm, they start to surveil. Yeah, this is a, definitely a Demir deck we're playing. And I've won against them. I've gotten smoked against them. There, we'll get another land out, which is nice. Well, he didn't have enough to counter, if he's even playing counters. And I don't have a land in my graveyard, that's why it didn't let me pull one out. We're not going to attack. What's he going to put on the graveyard? Yeah, he doesn't have a, a lot of choices from me. <laughs> He's getting a 2-3, or a 3-2, or a 2-2. Two, two. Well, I like how we ended up with that trade-off. The only problem is they took one of the cards out of our graveyard, so we have one less. I don't want to play this yet because I only have two cards in my graveyard, so we're going to do this. We're just going to attack and make him choose. Unless he has something else in mind, which is very possible. Come on, Peace Gun, make a decision. We'll send him in. He can block with the 2-2. Two -two. I doubt he's going to block with the Doom Whisper, but he may. Yeah, I didn't see that. See that coming, really? Well, we'll see what happens. He does have plenty of land. I'm waiting for a disinformation campaign. He is drawing and drawing and drawing some more. He's not obviously getting the cards he wants. Well, there you go. And that's a bummer because that does not go in our graveyard. That's good for him. <coughs> and he keeps surveilling. Yeah, Gruesome Menagerie, I think I'm just going to get rid of that, that card. It's basically useless for us. And passing our turn. What I really need is uh, Stitcher's Supplier. Yeah, 
This is one of the slowest games I've seen. I'm sure a lot left Giants gone. If he gets rid of uh, the Giant, though, then I have Mausoleum Secrets and I can pull something out of my, out of my deck with four mana. Yep. And he continues to draw. Maybe he's got a counter for it. He does. It's not not that big of a deal. He probably should have saved that for a creature. We gain life with the uh, foragers. I'm attacking. I'm assuming he's going to block. He may or may not. But for us, it's just another creature in the graveyard that gives us bonuses and pluses and all kinds of stuff. So it's not it's not a big deal. He should be attacking every turn with him, but he isn't because he thinks you know whatever he's thinking. Oh, I'm going to swoop in behind with whatever and. And now we will, I'm sure, continue drawing land. And he'll counter this, and we're probably done. Well, guys, it's looking like that's about the end of this. I'll wait for one more, uh, one more card draw, but my luck, I'm sure it'll be land. Just what I need. Woohoo! So, that's this uh, Undergrowth deck. It's fun to play, fun to mess around with. It's kind of a jank deck. Uh, it's just something to goof around with. Yep. Lucky me, more land. Thanks for stopping by. Um, like I said, we're coming live from the Man Cave. Hope you like, or hope you like what you saw. Uh, check it out, try it, see what you think. It's kind of fun. Any questions or comment, post them below. And be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks a lot. Have a good night.